All right. We're live. Welcome, everybody. My name is Charlie Bathgate. I'm the CEO of our operations here at Sang Luce and Wall Street Jesus. And today I'm joined by Ron Ronchero Friedman. Ron, say what's up. Good afternoon. What's happening? We are here as part of our Complete Flow Trader series. The Complete Flow Trader is the course taught by Wall Street Jesus, where we teach you everything you need to know uh, about how to trade flow and unusual options activity. Uh, we have a new course taught by Jay that is starting on July 1st. So we invite everybody to go check out, check that out, learn more about it at Complete Flow Trader. Um, at, sorry, wallstreetjesus.com. You can learn more about the complete flow trader there. So uh, what we're doing in this series is we're talking about flow trading, right? And I'm bringing in, I'm marching out, uh, you know, a number of different people from our community, you know, starting with with Ron, who is one of our leading educators. He's a partner in um, in Sang Lucci trading, <clears throat> you know, in our company. And uh, he's one of the best traders we know and has been, you know, an educator in our community for a long time. And as a result of that, he knows a lot about flow and he uses it in his trading, you know, in a way that I think is is illustrative of how it can be used. Um, this series, this interview series is really going to be just a series of conversations with uh, different traders who are who are using flow at a really high level and talking to them about um, how they use it differently, teasing apart the differences and, and the common denominators. And hopefully it will be an illustration for everybody about, you know, the power of, uh, of flow and unusual options activity. So, um, Let's start out, Ranch, with you know, kind of a thought experiment. What would your trading look like if you just didn't have any access to flow? If all of a sudden, magically, I waved a magic wand and there was like no unusual options activity for you, like what would happen so, to your trading? Yeah. So, I mean, first of all, that's a good place to start. When I first came into the room and discovered what flow trading and what flow was, I was actually very, um, blown away by it because it what it was doing was uncovering um you know footsteps of people who are trying to gain an advantage regardless of how they are coming across um trying to get that advantage you all of a sudden magically you could see footprints and and for such a long time i'd always been told by so many people like oh we're just we're trying to find the footprints of the big players and i'm like well how the hell do you do that right so right. when i came across wall street jesus um this environment is what opened uh, a lot of doors to finding opportunities so if i didn't have any kind of flow to look at i would struggle just to find uh opportunities where other traders are trying to find um a hidden advantage right like it's freaking survivor right it's a hidden hidden immunity idol buried somewhere on the on the freaking beach and in the trees right so Right. in a lot of ways that's what this that's what this represents is you know i can come up and with ideas all day long but if there's not activity and you know buying or selling on those ideas that i generate then i have less of an advantage of of being successful in in a trade so without it it's you you know i just i i don't even want to imagine a world where it doesn't exist charlie let's just put it that way <laughs> all right we'll put an end to that thought experiment then so so then yeah i mean let's talk about how you use it it's uh, based on what you just said it sounds like a lot of how you're using it is um either Com confirming or disconfirming a trade thesis that you might have going into a trade is that safe to say yeah i'm i'm somebody who over the course of time has developed a number of um things to help me um find ideas and execute trades and part of it is the ability to take let's say a recipe right a recipe of of different of things that that you get information from and can and can you combine them to come up with an idea where you can say long, short, sideways, right? And at the end of it, that's that's ultimately ultimately what we're looking for. So you know, I keep an eye on um, a certain basket of stocks. Uh, as an example, right now, the the semiconductor ecosystem, for lack of a better word, you know, consists of of a good handful of stocks that move not necessarily together on a day-to-day -day basis, but they're impacted greatly by the advent of the AI revolution, right? That's happening. So yep. we look for, I look for a certain number of things. Those can be things like the, you know, it technically is the stock in a, in a spot where technically I feel like I have an advantage, whether it's up or down. 
And mm -hmm. if that exists and all of a sudden flow comes into um, a particular name. So for example, today, uh, SMCI, which is not a quote unquote semiconductor company, but they, you know, they make these um, integrated circuit boards uh, for servers, et cetera. So it, it fuels the, it fuels that AI, um, uh, you know, what, what's happening in AI right now. It's, yep. it's part of the component. It's part of the ecosystem. And they came after today, they came out, they came after a lot of calls. So they came after a lot of calls in different expirations and in different strike prices. And when you have that activity and it line, it also lines up with other ingredients that I'm looking for. So for example, where does it line up technically? Okay. Is it, are they technically in a good spot? Yes. They're technically in a good spot. Okay. Bang. Here come all these call sweepers for different expirations and, and different um, strike prices. Do they know something? I don't know if they know something, but I know that I like the gamble or the risk that they're taking. And if I see that I think I have probability in a spot like that, that mm -hmm. makes my decision making a whole lot easier. So for example, today, SMCI was for me was was a day trade, but I used, you know, different X. I don't use the same expirations or the same strikes uh, all of the time that that sweepers hit. Sometimes I, I like it or I don't like it. And that all comes back to another part of my recipe, which is, OK, what's what's the time frame that I want to yep. trade? Like, you know, am I am I is this a day trade for me? And if it is a day trade, do I want to use a weekly? Well, probably not because, you know, the the time decay and volatility in a weekly option um, is just something like on an SMCI is just something that's too much for, for me to want to deal with. So, you know, I can use two weeks out. Right. And you mm -hmm. and, and just it's just again, it's just another part of the recipe of how I put things together. But without flow, a, a major ingredient in that list is is missing. And, and I don't I don't have as much um advantage and i don't get as much information and you know it, it doesn't give me uh, a great opportunity so having the flow really helps confirm um or add to the level of confidence and probability i have in a trade yeah got you so would you say when you start I and mean, when you say they were going after you know college you're talking about smart money is accumulating yeah i don't i mean i don't ultimately i don't know who they is and i don't know what they are up to or and i, and I don't know what they know you know what i mean right. I, right I do know from experience that if you see enough of it and in a certain you know at a, in a, in certain ways that like again that's that comes back to that that list of ingredients you know that's that's when you feel comfortable putting on risk it doesn't mean it's always going to be right but you you're in a spot where you have that probability. And, and for me, that's what it's all about is do I have probability or am I just guessing and chucking dice down to the end of the craps table? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you're such a good part of what we're going to do in this series is just talk to a lot of different people and just sort of illustrate and tease apart how they you how they trade differently, how you can use flow differently. And in your particular mm -hmm. case, when I think of you, I, th I feel like you use you layer on different tools and different levels of analysis and you sort of stack up arguments and each one of those layers has like an extra bit of probability that is tipping odds more and more in your favor and it sounds like this one is one of the last like flow is one of the last things that you're looking at maybe then as you start going to entries and exits maybe you're pulling up tape too is that happening yeah that's flow. yeah so that's yeah. that's all that's also part of the formula as well right so for mm -hmm. example sometimes when when you have something like an smci or you know broadcom or whatever it is and it, for example just to stay in that ecosystem of stocks these things move um with limited amounts of liquidity sometimes and sometimes they move with a lot of liquidity and being able to match the flow with what is the level two doing helps mm -hmm. you make you know decisions like oh okay there's a not only do we have this flow but i can see from level two that there's there are a ton of buyers and there are a ton of buyers at whatever you know whatever price um the the stock happens to be at and if i see something in combination like oh here's flow and by the way now smci is bid right like i see i see traders jumping in front of the current price just to get stock i mean i'm smashing the buy button i'm like that's a buy for me right right and right. I'll, I'll 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 i will still stay in a trade like that um 
for a, a you know whatever period of time. So for example, if if like I'm day trading it, I'm not looking to get the maximum out of the trade. I'm, I know that if I'm in a weekly or a, or two weeks out, I'm gonna have a a limited window of time to take profits. And sometimes I'm gonna get a lot of that profit, and sometimes I'm not. But if flow keeps if they keep piling into options, it just gives me more confidence to continue staying in a trade, even if I lose track of what's happening uh, in level two, right? And then I'm going back to that other list of, of recipes that I use, things like volume weighted average price, you know, time frame. Am I looking at a daily chart? Am I looking at a, a 30 minute chart? Am I looking at a two minute chart? Am I, you know, wh what components do I have to flip back and forth throughout the course of that trade to try and maximize whatever my gain is going to be? Yeah. So it sounds like I want to talk about the time horizon stuff in a second, because I think that's super important with this. Um, yep. But it sounds like part of what you're saying, like the advantage, the utility that flow gives you is it helps you not get maybe shaken out of trades or give up on something uh, prematurely, right? You're like, even if it's moving against you a little bit, if you're feeling a little shaky on it, you're like, dude, I saw like I know that there is serious money flowing into this name, pushing this name in a certain direction. Like that gives me a greater degree of confidence to, to hold on to this thing, even if it's moving against me a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, um, the, you know, the, I think there's, I think, uh, think about it too, in terms of let, let's say, let's say like, um, a rocket a and as an example, not, not to claim that I, I'm a rocket scientist or know that much about rockets. You're a smart dude. You're not a rocket scientist. I'll say that. <laughs> I, I know enough about a rocket that when, you know, you've got a launch, right? So yeah. the, 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 the first sweepers that come in in the very beginning of the day, the, you know, you're trying to figure out, okay, is, is this a missile being launched? Is, is this a rocket being launched? Right. And repeat, repeat, repeat. You're like, okay, I've got ignition, right? Like this is potentially a rocket. I'm going to, I'm going to jump in at the launch phase. Right. And then you've got yep. a boost phase, right. And, you know, during the boost phase, you know, you're, 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 you're in there and you're in there, you know, early and, and you can see continuation of those buyers from the flow, right? They just keep coming back in, um, you know, a stock moves up five or 10 points. And the next thing you know, um, you know, oh gosh, these guys were buying eight uh, hundreds to open and now they're buying eight twenties, right? And that's kind of like that boost phase, right? Now they're moving from eight twenties to eight forties, right? At some point, you know, you're going to reach the terminal phase, right? And the terminal phase is okay. The engine's cut out. Now this thing's going to start to either stay in its orbit or come back down to earth, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and where, you know, where is that? How do I find that? Well, that's that, then I'm starting to throw in, um, technicals to help me look at level two. So for example, like SMCI, right? You had a launch, you had a boost, you had a terminal phase and the terminal phase was it drifted back down to the volume weighted average price for the day, right? And that's that's either a spot where I can look at it and say, okay, do, am I gonna get a second trade out of this? Can I, can I go for more? And then flow will come in or not and help me decide whether there's gonna be another uh, another push up, right? Is it going to push up and try and reclaim those highs? Is it going to stay here? Is it not going to continue? Is it going to break down below today's volume weighted average price? Do I have an opportunity in the afternoon for a short? Sometimes that happens too, right? So yeah. um, it's it's um, it's an ebb and a and a flow. And um, when you when you see those the 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 buying coming in on flow in combination with these other things it, it really does help you um put you know it all together and decide and helps you decide what kind of a time frame do you want to be in so for example on the flow if i see weekly trades coming in um i'm thinking in my head immediately okay i'm probably looking at this as a day trade do i want to use this week or do i know i want to use next week well mm -hmm you know, more times than not, like on an SMCI or, you know, something that trades with, uh, with, with a, with a big premium, I'm looking to get away from a weekly option. I'm looking to give myself a little bit more cushion, um, only from a standpoint of that's what provides my mental makeup to stay in a trade through those phases of, you know, the stock, you know, launch boost terminal, right? Like that's, yeah. that's what helps me. So, 
Um, yeah. That's one of those. That's one of those things. If it's like if I'm trading something that's you know lower price, uh, I can get away with using a weekly, right? But I, I can't do it. I can't do it in an SMCI. I can do it in something that's a little bit lower uh, priced. For I could do it in a Marvell, right? I could do it in something like that that has a lower price point to it that mm -hmm. allows me a, a little bit more wiggle room. SMCI yeah. doesn't really allow a lot of wiggle room, right? Yep. Yeah, I mean, something that Jay goes really deep into in the course is. I mean, not only just breaking down like, okay, what's what are the different types of flow? What flow matters? What doesn't? You know, because I'd say ninety percent of the flow like really doesn't matter, and people trade off of it like it does. That's one of the biggest mistakes we see people making, right? So he breaks all that down, of course. But then another thing he does is really helps people customize what flow matters to them, what flow should matter to them based on their time horizons, right? And their yes. trading style. Um, yeah. And what I love about so much of what you're saying is with this, you know, rocket ignition metaphor is you're like, you know, does it come back down? Does the rocket sort of come back down to for you? You're like, I'm looking at VWAP, you know, other traders might be looking at other levels created by other, you know, other tools and other, you know, types of analysis. It kind of is irrelevant. Um, if when in regards to this conversation, because we're just saying like flow is something that you can layer on to your existing strategy and help kind of calibrate your, your decision making. Um, I mean, you are a trader that you operate on different time horizons. You will have days where you scalp. You also have, you know, trades that are, are longer, you know, weeks in duration, then you have even longer duration trades. I mean, that's one of the reasons why, um, you have the, you know, the following that you do and, and the loyalty that you do from people in the room, because there's so many different ways that you can, uh, skin the cat, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, do yep. you find yourself when you're putting on some of your longer term position leaps and stuff like that? Do you find yourself like ignoring certain types of flow and, and looking at others or, you know, you really kind of mostly using it for your, your shorter term positions at this point? The, the, the longer term, um, positions are i would say they're they're harder to use flow for from a long-term perspective and the reason that is i use i use long-term leaps i use leaps in a different way than what we see in flow so for example i'm somebody that will try to mimic stock through the mm -hmm. use of leaps whereas leap buyers in certain names are not doing the same thing. So for example, a good example is, is Nancy Pelosi's trades, right? Like Palo Alto networks, right? Right. Palo Alto networks. What is she doing? She's buying deep in the money call options far out in time. It's basically stock replacement, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she's just having less capital outlay, which is smart to get, a um a very similar return as the shareholder without the risk and nine times 9.9 .9 times out of 10 nancy knows something right so if i see that kind of sweeper activity that's far out in time whatever her position is her you know her strike that might not be relevant to me but me seeing that activity and applying the way that i do it that's relevant, right? So from a yep. long-term perspective, and you see a lot less of it because most stock moves and people, traders, whoever they are, that are are coming in with with flow are are let's 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 face it, these get they're trying to get an edge. They think they know something or they do know something, and mm -hmm. they're looking for a quick hit. And mm -hmm. when I say a quick hit, these guys are not taking down, you know, a couple hundred thousand. These these guys are coming in like on an SMCI, they're looking for millions of dollars in a four or five day time span, if not within the next 25 minutes, if they can get it right. Yep. yep. That's so that's, that's relevant, right? That's yep. relevant. And those are things that add to, you know, again, that list of ingredients of, of probability. And that's, you know, that's where it all comes in. But the, the further out, in time, sometimes that you'll see like um, the leap buyers, they're so far out of the money. I'm like, okay, who taught you how to do this? Because you need to go back to freaking pre-K and learn the alphabet again, because that you're not going to have any success with that trade. <laughs> right, 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 right. But they, again, they could be doing something completely. You know, they, I'm sure they're up to something um, Dave, that, that I just, I just don't know about. Right, I can't yeah. presume to know what they're doing. But if yeah. I see it and it doesn't match, I'm like, that's not going to help me. Yeah, that's not going to help me. I mean, I think 
So I'm curious for you, you obviously see hundreds of people, you know, every day coming through our, um, you know, in our community, we have new traders who come in and, you know, often no matter how much education or, or support we provide, there's always going to be people who come in and they, and they make mistakes, you know, um, and there's, there's mistakes that are just humans make mistakes. And then there's mistakes of just like not understanding how something works, not understanding how flow works. I mean, what are, what are some of the mistakes that you see people who are newer to trading flow making? Um, well, if they don't, if they don't have any kind of methodology and the only thing that they do is come in and trade based off of the flow that they see, the success rate of that is is low, right? It's not sustainable. Okay. And I think right. newer people come in and they see, oh, look at all this SMCI that's being bought today. That's this is all I have to do. I just have to wait for flow in SMCI and every single time I'm I'm going to trade that and I'm going to make money or whatever the flow is today I'm going to I'm trading that and I'm going to make money and they don't they don't spend the time to get to get educated as to well what is that what is that flow um leaning towards right like what kind you you've got to see enough of it to be able to to um to to place the trade right so it's i mean you and i were just talking about tennis you've got to see enough serves to be able to return the serve right you yep. can't yep. step in and just expect to be able to return serves from a, a serious tennis player right mm -hmm. like in in right. even with all the practice in the world you can still screw up the return right so yep. it 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 take you've got somebody's got to teach you all right where do you stand what kind of you know what is coming at you and where are you going to return you know where you're going to return this you can't just like are you playing singles or are you playing doubles are, are you just going to return this ball um you know cross court if you're playing doubles you you know what i mean like you want you want to hit to the defensive player you don't want to hit to the offensive net player are you playing singles? Can you can you return the serve to the opposite side of the court? Like that's you know that's you've got to be able to see enough flow, or you've got to get educated quickly about what it, what it is that you're seeing, so that you're not standing there watching serve after serve go past you. Yeah, yeah, they don't get enough. They don't have anybody to teach them what matters and what doesn't. They don't yeah. wait to get reps under their belt. Yeah, and yeah. like you said, they come in with without a trading strategy that they're using flow to sort of supercharge and inform, you know, um, sometimes I think about flow is like steroids. It's like putting that's something, an existing methodology that maybe has a slight bit of edge, you know, on steroids. And it just makes it like way more potent, precise, accurate, you know, position size and can go up because you have a, a higher degree of confidence. Yeah. Um, and what we see people do a lot is they come in and they think every, you know, every number, every every piece of unusual options activity, every every order that has a lot of numbers behind it, they're like, ooh, that's basically an alert. That's like a trade alert. Mm -hmm. So something big just happened in whatever Tesla or SMCI or whatever. I'm just going to follow that. I'm just going right. to trade it. And it's like, yeah. no, that is not. <laughs> and, then, and then people do that. And they're like, oh, I tried flow trading. Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't work. work. <laughs> it doesn't work, you know. Um, I mean, Ozzy in his interview that we did with him, Ozzy's a is a member of the room who has thrown up big PLs in the past couple months, you know, seven figure PLs. Um, and he was talking about how when he and in the interview I did with him, which you can find on our YouTube channel if you're if you're uh, watching this on YouTube, um, he was talking about how he when he first came in was just sort of like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna treat these as alerts. And I think it was a private a conversation he had with you where you were like, yo, dude. No, like <laughs> that's not that's not how this works, man. Yeah. First of all, you gotta you gotta you know think of these things very differently. You know, it's it's informing a, a a trade thesis, and you have to understand what orders matter, what orders don't. A lot of the orders don't matter, um, and then you got to factor in how it, how it relates to your trading strategy, right? Yeah, so. and, and and to to that to that end, you you also have to have an understanding of of the vehicle you're using to trade options are not if you don't know anything about options you are you are the you're the donator right, uh, right. to put it as politely as i can um and and there are a lot of donators and it, it's not to say that what we do guarantees anything right but what we do do 
is say, okay, if you look, you now, now maybe you have some advantage because of the flow. Let's talk about what option you're using. Right. And mm -hmm. like, I think Ozzy would do that as well. Like that's, he's a great example, right? Like you'd see, you'd see flow come in on a certain name at a certain strike. And I think oftentimes he would follow it or he'd go like further out of the money than what those, you know, um, sweepers were coming in at. And then he'd wonder, well, why am I not making money on them? I'm like, well, do you know how implied volatility works? He's like, no. I'm like, okay, we got to talk about that, right? So, right, right, right. Like you, so you, 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 you have to know other things um, in addition to just using uh, the flow. So it, it you know, you, there's there are some other things that you've got to pick up on. That's why I say it, it's a, it's a it's an it's a list of ingredients. It's a recipe, right? Yep, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna give a plug to the course again. There's, we're, we're offering a, a discount for uh 20% off on the course. If you sign up, you know, before we, we do the next live session, which is, um, no flow 2024, you can use that coupon code like K N O W flow 2024. Um, when you check out at wallstreetjesus.com for the complete flow trader, that'll get you 20% off the price of the course. And that is available up until July 1st when we start teaching these live classes. Um, and if you're an annual member for the Steam Room and you're interested, please message us, um, message me or Norris in the room. We got a much steeper discount available for you, annual members, you know, as a sign of our gratitude and appreciation. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's another thing that's, that's going to be really interesting as we continue the series and have these conversations is there are we have, you know, traders in our room who are primarily equities traders, primarily options traders, primarily futures traders, people who trade all three, just depending on what you know, the mood that strikes them or the, you know, the trade setup or whatever, all of them can use flow and unusual options activity, you know, they, but as you said, Raj, I mean, you got to understand the instrument that you're trading first. Yeah. Flow isn't just going to magically make, <laughs> remove right. the ability. Which, which, to be, and yeah. your point, you just mentioned there are some, some guys that are equities traders, right? Like for a yeah. lot of traders having flow, matters to them because they're trading the underlying equity and and for Jay, a lot of traders Jay Jay, yeah like that. that's the, yeah. that's that's their bread and butter and and that's fine but if you're if you come in and you're like oh i'm an equities guy but now i see this option flow and i just want to trade the options well you, we we gotta we gotta make sure that you understand what's what's happening before you before you jump into you know you you, you go from a an impala to a ferrari so <laughs> it's right a, right it's, it's yeah. a different thing i mean and you're you and and Jay are great examples of this. I mean, you are obviously you're you're you know leverage you're using condors, uh, you know, almost every single week. Like you are a very experienced, advanced options trader that you primarily trade options. You know, Jay likes to mostly trade the equity. You know, but yep. he's he's basing a ton of his equity trade decisions on unusual options activity. Yeah. Um. And if you don't think that that's an option to you, then you are wrong. It is an option for you, <laughs> so you need, you need to you need to consider that. I actually think um, it's really good for guys that that trade that just trade equity because you know they they don't like Jay doesn't want to deal with expiration. He doesn't want to deal with implied volatility. He doesn't want to deal with something that expires in five days. That's there's a lot of great reasons for traders to not use options, right? It's yeah. just you know just it all just comes back to who you are and how you're, you know, what, what you're comfortable with and how you're made up. But the, the flow helps all of us. It, it, it's not just for the shareholder. It's not just for the option trader. It's not just for the index guy. It, it helps everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jay is much more, I feel like Jay's mentality, Jay's mantra for life is just like, keep it simple, stupid, you know, like yeah. don't overcomplicate things slow and steady. Just, just kick ass every day and hit singles and doubles. And he's obviously built an incredible career doing that. And, and, you know, has, has done fantastic. You're like, dude, I want to use every tool in the tool shed, right? Like you're always hungry. I feel like to learn new things, implement new things, new tactics. And so you're like, Hey, options opens up a whole universe of potential, you know, plays, trades, trade structures. I can do I'm, You know, I'm going to do that. You get a guy like Lucci who, has a risk tolerance that's in the top five percent, one percent, maybe, and he's like, "Ooh, un he's like weekly options, <laughs> love it. Daily options, love it. Like, let's let's go. Let's load the boat and give me all the edge I can get, so I can take you know huge swings at these things and uh, give me a seven figure trade in a single day. So, yeah. you know, 
different strokes for different folks for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Um, is, is there anything, you know, when you think of like your experience in the room every day and questions you get, I mean, is there anything that you feel like, you know, the public should know more about when it comes to, to flow trading? Like if someone's new coming in here, you know, and they had 15 seconds of your time and they're like, Raj, what do I do with this? Like, what would you, what would you tell I me? mean, there's, so, you know, when you talk about, you know, Jay keeps it simple. Um, I would also argue that I keep things simple. The yeah. instrument that gets used is complex and you have to understand if you push on it, what happens to the other side of it, right? Yeah. So yeah. Under, understanding, having an understanding of those things is what's important. And that's that's a learning curve for most people. But once you understand what those things are, you'll see that the way that I use the, the the vehicle, the derivative, is it's almost always from, and I'll use the tennis analogy again too, it's it's almost always from a defensive position first, mm. and then can it move into an offensive or an attacking position? I never put myself in an attacking position right off of the get-go. I'm always, my first thought is always is, Okay, if things don't work, how am I getting out of this? How am I getting out of this without my head on a platter, right? So yep. that there's there's a lot of the the more you know about how the things work, the it, it is also simple and it's it's also I think more of a um, limiting risk compared to what the shareholder does. The the guys trading in and out of of equities. And that's just my view, right? I don't like massive capital outlay. Mm -hmm. So I use options to get a very similar return. And I'm not going to get dollar for dollar that that the the equity guys do. However, the amount of leverage that I can get with the reduction in, in capital risk means that I, I get a much bigger percentage return than the guys using um, the equity. And I take less risk at least that's my that's my view of it and mathematically that's actually how it works out so that's why yeah. i like you know that's why i like using the options but you you do have to understand them there is a learning curve for that you know if you're going to use it successfully and in combination with um with flow so you know there, there's nothing wrong with being an equities trader at all it works it works great for that it also helps with the you know the index guys too right because if you see um you know all these semiconductors, you know, if they're all getting flow, but you don't, you can't trade in an, an individual name or you're not good at trading an individual name. Well, that's going to have a positive impact probably on the NDX, right? Or the Qs. So those guys use flow in that way also. So there's, there, it all just depends on, do you understand what you're looking at? Do you understand the vehicle that you trade and how to apply all of it? So that's what it comes yeah. back to. Yeah. I mean, one of the, what you just said reminds me of, an important part of why we structured the course the way we do. I mean, you get these classes these, that we teach live at night, you get access to the recordings and everything, but we also give three months of access to the steam room. And in part it's because like, we want people to be able to like learn this material and then go in and see how like you, as you just described, are using this on a day-to-day -day basis. It really helps to have like multiple days, months worth of reps under your belt to be like, okay, now I understand what all of these order types mean. I understand which ones to pay attention to, which ones to throw out. I can read all this, whether you're using our flow or you're using some other platform provider, you know, that's fine too. Um, but then like, what's the next level to this? How am I going to use this in, in, in the way that makes sense for me? How are other people using this on different time horizons? You know, seeing, seeing how it's being factored into actual market activity, news events, you know, things that are make causing rips in the market. Um, or even like dead days when there's not much going on, you know, it's, that's a really, really big part. That experiential component of, of watching people do it live in front of you is really important. So, um, yeah, I'm glad that we, that's, that's the whole reason that, that, you know, we kind of built that in. Um, I mean, you've had, we've, we've talked a little bit in the past about the, some of the bigger trades that you've taken down. Um, you know, usually I have to put a, put a, uh, hot iron on your ass to get you to talk about your PL because you're a humble dude, which is one of the reasons why we, you know, we love having you. But um, you know, you've had really big gains this year in some in some positions. I mean, was flow like the Costco 
trade? You know, was, did Flo play a role in that for you? Or it did not play a role in Costco one iota. So you know where it where it did. Um, hang on, let me see if I can change this here. Uh, you know where where Flo in some of those longer term names. So for example, Palo Alto Networks. You know mm -hmm. what? It, it was. Nancy bought it. Like, I don't need any other reason, right? She's the best fucking trader on the streets. Right, right. So, you know, I've got a long-term position there. And, and that was noted by Flo. You know, another one that was um that was noted by Flo. And I, you know, I make mistakes, and this one I made a, a big mistake on by not holding it was um CrowdStrike, right? CRWD. Like we mm -hmm. saw Flo coming into CrowdStrike. This was back in January of 23 and it was it was an insider buying so an insider bought 60,000 shares in in addition to that they were buying call options and they were buying out of the long dated out of the money call options and we we identified it later as you know who who it was internally at the company and we we're like this is a great spot to to tail this thing long term right so the the stock moves from 100 bucks to 160 and i'm like yeah high fives were fucking cool and then now the stock is trading at 375 right so oh, you you fucked that one up didn't you? <laughs> I, mean, I make mistakes i leave money on the table right but flow Sounds like a pretty pretty decent trade but was, yeah, I mean, I but yes, yeah, it is. It's a good trade, but it's not. You know, you everybody wants the ones that you can that you can claim, um, you know, hero status on. And right. it's it's. I wish it was that easy. Like Costco for me was not flow. Costco was was me paying attention to, um, to technicals from a high point to a low point, and then how it compressed into the middle. And then, you know, I just kind of you know, did some of my own research as well as some other research that was out there and decided that this is, it, people are not going to stop going to Costco. And if there are inflationary times and if there's any kind of, you know, jolts to the economy, et cetera, people are still going to Costco for their toilet paper, right? And yep. their chicken, their dino bites and mac and cheese and everything else, right? So to me, I was like, fine, I'm, I'm going to use the way that I like to, to use, you know, the options. And then, of course, somewhere along the way, when you're in the position, a Costco will pick up flow occasionally. And the nice thing about that is when it does pick up flow, you're like, oh, somebody now you, because it because it doesn't happen, it's notable and it's relevant. Right. Yep. Yep. So I don't get I don't get flow in Costco like I get flow in an SMCI or a Microsoft or an Amazon. But the nice thing about flow is if I know about it and it shows up in a Costco, I, I'm, I know that something I'm going to have an opportunity for something long, short, yeah. sideways, right? I know I'm going to get an opportunity most likely because there's hardly ever any flow in it. So, yeah, especially in a name that you know that well. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, Ranch, thank you for thank you for doing this. Thanks for taking the time. As always, um, the series is going to continue, guys. So keep keep your eyes on the YouTube channel. We're going to keep dropping these interviews. If you're interested in in learning flow from from the man who you know named a lot of these types of orders, Wall Street Jesus himself, uh, class the the course starts July first. Again, you can get twenty percent off using that coupon code No Flow twenty twenty four over at WallStreetJesus.com. And uh, yeah, we hope to see a bunch of you in the, in the course with us. Yeah, I hope to see a bunch of you guys in there too. Jesus is uh, Jay is very fun when he's uh, when he's teaching too. He he makes a ton of um, really uh, good points and and he's very he's very good communicating with people from all walks of life. I think I think you guys get a lot out of it. For sure, he's a good he's a good teacher. He knows how to make this stuff not uh, not boring as hell, you know, to to learn. And he's got more stories than any of us could ever imagine he shares them every once in a while True. from the broker days and stuff which are always great yeah. uh you know he might spill coffee on his keyboard every once in a while <laughs> but that's just the cost of doing business so yeah cool all right Ranch, thanks for doing this man really appreciate thanks, it sir. you bet thanks for watching everybody